ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Music Man podcast. Um, this podcast, again, is for you to strike a chord with your creative soul. I'm your co-host with my new co-host, Ken. I'm Joe. Um, and I am thrilled to be, or I'm thrilled that we are your guides on the melodic journey through the vast and enchanting world of music. Ooh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> today's topic we're going to be talking about is basically going to be the changing music industry with streaming and AI and either we adapt or we or we die so kind of how we're viewing this um and we're going to go through pros and cons of, of all this stuff um so basically did you want to take it off ken and kick it off and start off with the topic that you want yeah, yeah. Um, so, our as you said today, our topic is the impact of AI on music, so to speak. And I'm sort of paraphrasing. I have an article. Uh, it was I pulled this. I did a general search on uh, Google for uh, AI in music production, and very first article that came up was actually a nice, concise, good article. It's, uh, I found it on uh, Coin Telegraph, or I'm sorry, CoinTelegraph.com, and uh, I believe this is a uh, crypto. cryptocurrency yeah. podcast, or not podcast uh, article. Anyways, uh, this is by a, 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 a journalist, Victoria Kennedy. She's an award-winning crypto journalist and publicist, and she basically broke things down. Very similar to, or I would say, uh, relevant to the outline that you, Joey, uh, came up with in regards to the topic. And, you know, first and foremost, the pros of what AI is or what it, what it can mean for music. Um, I have, uh, as, as in, in, in relation to this article, um, she starts off with, you know, artificial intelligence has exploded. It's a popular culture and musical industry. Uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a way music is created. The way music is created, consumed, and monetized feels as though it's on the cusp of a major change. So I guess major change, major uh, adaptation, like when CDs, compact discs, came around, um, that was kind of what is is starting to happen here with uh ai in relation to what it does for music um do you want now uh, do you want to go to your list of pros and cons and sure. uh just, we'll start elaborating on some of the ideas that we're dealing with here we, yeah definitely and i want to just piggyback off what you said with like the cassettes or like you know it started with vinyl went to a track went to cassettes went to uh, CDs and then like you and I growing up went into like LimeWire and Napster when like mm -hmm. stealing music pirating music and stuff <laughs> I I the, the real thing like on that whole situation for me is like it's it's adapting you know so mm -hmm. I do think though we can go into the pros of of some of this stuff um, yeah so with many indie musicians being one or two members like you and i write you and i write together and you do a lot of guitar and vocal work and the bass and i do the drums on the stuff that you and i do together um yeah. with a lot of the stuff and then some of my personal stuff you help me with the vocals and some guitar work we're two members we are encompassing like we talked about the last episode with like doing all this other stuff production mixing mastering ai in in a pro of this ai can help with some of the tasks that are either more challenging or which are more tedious to us to do um yeah. and just again to use as a personal thing i hate writing lyrics i'm terrible at writing lyrics 
It's not a great thing for me. <laughs> I look at that as a pro where I can use AI in some aspect of it and say, hey, I need a groundwork framework of something that I can work with. I'm not going to use that, but can I have something that like helps me uh, get a, a firmer start on something that I really dislike and I'm not good at doing? Um, sure, sure. Anyway, go ahead. I, I, I agree. Uh, I, the Even in this article uh, by uh, Victoria Kennedy, um, she talks about how she says, you know, in essence, this system has evolved uh, to, like you said, take take care of some of the tedious work or the you know the repetitive sort of patterns that you know uh, I think one of the things uh, they talked about is like if you or I think you said it as well um like setting up loops or setting up you know pre-programmed mm -hmm. patterns within your DAW or wherever you're operating uh, this could essentially make it easier for you to do it um I I I sort of had a a point that in regards to uh, it goes on to talk about how it's okay. So adding to the cost effective nature of this emerging technology, AI can also help to improve music production by automating repetitive tasks and freeing up artists to focus on more creative aspects of the music making process. Uh, the AI powered applications are available to analyze as well and correct both pitch and timing errors in vocal recordings. So that kind of brings me to the first questionable portion of AI. In this point being made, AI can help you as an individual artist or creator to to flush out uh, the bulk of your idea that you want to create, and then you can add the icing to the cake. Like it is a means by with the, with which to help you get the work done faster so that you don't have to solicit other musicians or waste time programming, blah, blah, blah. However, in relation to that, okay, the software, just like Auto-Tune, uh, you know, corrects your pitch and timing errors and so on and so forth. The first thing that personally I think is, is a question to be raised is, well, now does that benefit unskilled talent and undermine skilled talent? talent that is actually capable of performing uh, or singing mm -hmm. uh, in pitch and on key uh, is does it open the door to an excess of unskilled talent making talent in the the very word itself uh useless useless yeah <laughs> um, and that's a valid valid point um so yes on one hand it is very beneficial to have the tool uh in order to to so so then in, in a way you know there's some people that are just they they just aren't not capable but it just takes more time to build and construct your idea using the tool set or this or even the skill set that you have like like for you and I when we we first started working with DAWs we had to learn how to do each step we had to learn how to program this and we had to learn how to to well how what does this button do and figure out oh crud I just went ahead and recorded a whole song when I needed to adjust my uh you know the the inline volume so, <laughs> so on and so forth like the it this AI software can eliminate that learning curve and help you to get going faster um that next point okay so Going in, into further into uh, uh, Victoria's article, um, it, it she says that the AI gives the or, I'm sorry AI has the ability to more quickly deal with some of the technical aspects of making music, meaning like what I just said, like oh there's a learning curve and figuring out your DAW and programming, blah 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 blah, but they throw in here it says okay. Uh, it can quickly deal with some of the technical aspects of music making, uh, will accelerate the creation and release process. 
I think that's very good for the musician. Two points related to that. First point is it's very good for the musician or the, or the creator of the music as long as in the end result it's going to be conveyed with human mm -hmm. uh, musicians or human talent so that the human element is still part of the music. And the other point it, that sort of hit me when I was reading the article is that, okay, well, if it's going to quick, if it's going to accelerate the creation release process, will that necessarily benefit the artist in terms of profits or making money? Because let's say these tools are being used by a production team or an engineering team, and the talent is even further down the totem or further down the, the line of per, you know, percentage that they get from the, 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 the product, basically. So now we have uh, producers that know how to use the AI to quickly accelerate the creation and release of it. Well, who benefits from that now? And I'm sort of touching a little bit on your the next sort of point in our conversation today is uh, uh, on Spotify. Uh, if a producer has even more control over the music and the value that comes from the music, where does the artist sit in that whole scenario? And is that shifting the, the power even further to non-artist uh I guess non-artist control in yeah. a way. So you absolutely hit a good point, but I want to wait till we get to the Spotify one just so we can get through the AI stuff. But yeah. that is absolutely a hundred percent so spot on with like mm. that con of things where we're gonna lose something out of it. Um because everything you said in there in that article that's talking about it absolutely like it's immoral it's it's moral and ethical into art you know that we're we're thinking that we're thinking um how we don't lose that hum, human touch still but also how artists and stuff still make money yeah even if it's not millions and millions of dollars it's still something steady income yeah um so before we do go to the Spotify stuff, though, there's another thing I want to touch on with AI as a pro. And I think you and I would agree that this is absolutely like a beneficial thing for small independent artists, especially people like who, us who are just like one, two, yes. three people. Um, you can definitely utilize AI with tours or bookings with helping gather information and automating things, again, that would take hours and you're yeah. not using it for music time it's for tedious crap that you don't want to be doing you know sure um and again these are tools like ai is a it's this isn't supposed to be like ai is all good or ai is all bad i think it's just like everything else like moderation if used yes. correctly we could utilize it and it could make things so much more streamed which isn't isn't progress supposed to be in the music industry like a positive, you know? And that's kind of how I view this bullet point is this is one of those positives where it's like, like you and I, do you remember those, um, the, the music almanac, they're not music almanacs, but it's like, um, you can purchase like for like 30 or $40 from like Amazon or it was a, like a bookstore. It was like the indie Bible. And it gave you all the information for all states with all like clubs, venues, promoters, all this stuff. And it was a huge, like thick book. And every year they updated it with new information. You don't have to do that now. And this is AI can benefit and help people like us being like, hey, I need states that have, you know, a big rock scene with whatever, yada, yada. So anyway, not to go off on a long tangent, but 
I think this point is exactly why AI is a benefit, especially for small artists like us. Absolutely. I, I agree 110%, especially because we touched in our other podcast, uh, the different hats that an, an independent artist needs to wear. And this is AI is sounding like it, it is going to be or is already being an invaluable tool for the marketing side like creation of music and the art form and craft that is making music is one it's one it's a whole other, one side of the brain mm -hmm. you know, metaphorically speaking and marketing is the other side of the beast uh, those are the two parts ultimately that create the business of musical entertainment, right? Right. So to, to to be able to use AI and figure out all of those problems and get you know overcome those hurdles uh, using AI, so much, so much of uh, an extremely valuable tool. So and um, I know a lot of people are probably like, well, because the, the last bullet point I have for a pro, and you're right, is can be used to help with like writing content like social media posts or, um, you know, uh, they use publicists for too, like, you know, putting out distribution of like, hey, you know, broadcasts and stuff like that of certain things. Um, but that's where AI can be a benefit as well, where you're having uh like a basic leg to stand on where you just as a small team um mm. but it's still this is where we get into the cons because publicists managers um booking agents those are all people that get paid in the music industry but are they really doing what the artists are, do are doing if you know what i mean yeah. like creating the art and I think that's where ultimately, again, it's ethical and moral dance. Like, yeah, if an artist can do it all themselves now and they're taking away what we call the middleman who's, they add value, but to what extent, you know? Yeah. It, this isn't, it could be a con in some aspects. Like, I'm trying to like teeter on like not being like these people aren't valued for certain things, but... <laughs> There's other aspects yeah. of the bigger system, if you know what I mean, that like was created as an industry versus an art, if you know what I mean. Yes, yes, it's it's that it's that contentious relationship between uh, an art form and the the business that tries to profit off of the yeah. art form. That's beautifully stated. Yes, um, I, you know, I. I my my experiences as a visual artist throughout you know college and you know some of my earlier years uh it, it's it's all about it's all about uh product and how do you balance between making uh a making genuine uh evocative uh art visual art but also sell to like a, a mass market. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, 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 I would imagine we could, uh, one of the, one of the one things that I want to throw in there in regards to AI being of assistance to uh, people and artists and creating their music, the, the, like you said, the actual creation of the musical content to back up, what the artist is trying to create so yeah. if it's a if it's a singer and guitar player and they want to have a full band sound behind them to, to begin with they can create and demo uh, or create a demo using the ai and what i feel helps with the ethical side of this equation is okay you've created this demo using ai to help you get your idea uh out um then I feel like the next ethical thing is is that it should be executed by humans, by people. 
So now you bring your AI created material, uh, if you can, uh, to actual musicians and then bring that to an audience via actual human <laughs> that's yeah, a really, human performance that's because, fascinating that's a great idea that's actually a great point right because for for me like creating visual art is it's a physical act it's a physical thing and um that physical function comes through musicians as well uh the the if an individual is playing their instrument there's uh there's touch there's feel there's time there's dynamic there's there's tempo there like the the craft of musicianship uh it, it it's a physical act of of coordinating your faculties to bring some kind of emotional performance uh through your performance so we could sit here and say that okay the ai version of of you know michael jackson's beat it sounds great but as musicians you and i know full well there's idiosyncrasies and qualities of the f of a of a person performing yeah. on the instrument that is very different than what an ai generated audio might sound like um, so that that's my my two cents on that. Use AI all you want to help you out and make things easier, uh, but primarily on the uh, creation side of the actual music, I think the end result should should be human generated, yeah, or performed, I should say. Yeah, that's a I, you're absolutely correct on with that point that you touched on though with like utilizing it as a tool to build something upon, but then using human elements to actually craft what the idea is. Um, yeah. We're going to go into the cons now because I got my timer going and I'm making sure we're, oh, we're staying okay. on All right. staying on <laughs> damn time because we can get you and I can get carried away in, in a good way. I know. Um, but for the cons, I'm just going to read the cons real quick and we can still touch on them real quick. Sure. Um, but basically we had for cons would was could completely eliminate the human element from the art itself could mm -hmm. be used and oversaturated um in an already saturated industry yes and could be used way too much in the wrong direction which we all know in america or just in human society stuff goes in the wrong direction way too over you know even without sure. ai um but those are the three cons that i think we we both agreed upon that could be absolute like bad. oh yeah that would be bad yeah the 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 one con above of oversaturating the industry I, I the way my mind sees that is okay everybody's using ai and ai is essentially pulling data from everything else that already exists yeah so if if you've ever seen like you driving down the street and every single car looks the same that's what will end up happening because uh, AI will sample what's most purchased or most liked. Uh, and that's, I, I, I think that's a lot of what automakers end up doing is they copy little things that sell best. Well, you know, so-and-so put this in their vehicle. Well, we're going to do this, but we're just going to change it a little bit. And that's why everything looks the same. Uh, I, it has a high potential for everything to to have a quality, whether or not they're all the same music. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be the same music, the same song, and so on and so forth. But yeah. the 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 minute differences will will go away because the AI will only select the most uh, the most appreciated or most wanted just like the algorithms on something like the uh you know the 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 tubes uh the yellow tube or the red tube <laughs> not red tube that's a bad site <laughs> uh the uh youtube uh the algorithms they will start it, somebody had said it once it like it becomes myopic because it will only select things that it thinks you might like 
right. well, then things just become similar, 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 similar. So that's that's what that, I'll, I'll leave that because I think this the idea of oversaturation will lead us perfectly into Spotify. Yeah, which if you would like to take take that one, go for it because you brought up that really good point. I think we should continue on to that one. Okay. Well, the the whole idea, like Spotify, for me as for my personal experience as a newly released artist, uh, it's amazing the reach that uh, you have as an artist and musician uh, using Spotify. It is unbelievable how far you can get your song heard using the platform. Um, I think as I, I think I said in the other podcast. Uh, I remember going through and looking all the at the statistics or the trends and stuff that the uh, distribution softwares give you. Um, even through uh, there's I think there's Spotify for artists and you can log on there and look at who who's listening. And never in my wildest dreams would I have thought someone in Malaysia or in Australia mm-hmm. or in Poland would listen to my music but spotify allows you to do that like it you you say here uh, you've said here it says it, it, like it gets your music in front of and accessible to millions and millions of people like it's it's amazing it also allows uh, for artists to push their music more uh the oh, the whole marketing side of it if mm-hmm. you if you're not using ai well these uh, distribution places and Spotify will give you tools to market yourself and get more people to to listen to your music. Um, and then I think you put in here it also allows your music to reach new listeners. That's that's fantastic because how many times you play, you know, let's say you you played the same bar eleven times this year and it's kind of the same people, the same everything. Well, how do you branch out? You don't have a record company to use their connections to get you international exposure. Well, hey, you know, this technology kind of gives you that ability to be international uh, in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you also – go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, no, I was going to just continue with your, po- your, uh, your pro that you had in here on the list. Go for it, go for it. Uh, is that uh, unlike music shops where your CD would be hard to find after years of being released, yeah, it sits there in the – the the little uh, the little cubby in the the record store, um, and I remember I don't know if it was a a video or if it was some some somewhere I remember hearing that uh, back in the day your record only ha- there was only enough space certain amount yeah. of space on the actual shelf, and if your record wasn't pushed by a company hard enough where there wasn't enough space or it only could stay on the the shelf for very long and so on and so forth so there was limited space well spotify it's infinite uh the space <laughs> for yeah. your music you can put you can put as much as you want up there of your music if you want <laughs> and and that's i think that was a valid point with um with the pros where i was like that really does matter to small artists like you're able to, yeah. like you and I just released some music. That's going to sit out there. And when my daughter gets old enough and she really wants to start listening or something, like in 20 years from now, she could be re-going back onto Spotify and being able to find it yeah. easily. Like, that's crazy to think of. Separate from the payouts and all that stuff, even because we talked about that the last podcast, um, CDs didn't pay out very well either, though. So it was like kind of that thing where it's like, this is where the industry, in quotes, is, like you said, uh, consumerism, you know, the AI feeding algorithms of some kind. It's like, instead of it just being about art. So, um, but it's kind of, yeah, go ahead. It's kind of bleeding. This is kind of bleeding into the, okay, it's awesome that your music is out there. It's awesome the platform that you have to get your sound to other people okay well now we're running into a situation of how 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 much is my content being heard yeah well the spotify system works a lot like uh, marketing whereas the more your presence is known the more you're seen the more you're you're being pushed 
that means more exposure and more content. It's it's the whole billboard thing. Post the have pay for as many billboards as you can up on the highway so that people see it all the time, whether they need it or not. So that when the time comes when they need it, all they remember is your name. Mm-hmm. Well, that's really, 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 really hard to do with music when you don't have any money and you don't have any connections. And Spotify likes to let you think you have all these tools at your disposal. Well, one of the things you can do, thinking like a marketer, is the beauty of Spotify is the more content you put on there, that means there's the more product is out there for listeners to see, hear, to... Uh, it's, it's, it's like, okay, you have a glass of water and you have food coloring. You have red food coloring. You put one drop of red food coloring in there and the water doesn't necessarily... It turns a little bit color. But if you really want big effect, you put in as many drops as you can. And the more drops you put in, the more that water will turn redder and redder and redder and more noticeable and more, oh, look at that. That's kind of how marketing works. So to be able to use Spotify to put more and more and more of your content Essentially, you're not restricted by a record company telling you how many albums. No, no, we have to tour for this album. Don't we're not putting out another album. You could put out five albums in a year if you wanted to, and that is, I think, the tip of the iceberg is extremely pro. Like that is a pro, pro, pro because you can use the marketplace to just spill your guts in there. Problem with that is. Everyone else can do that. And when I mean everyone else, I mean everyone in the world that has access to a computer and can produce music. Like every every single solitary person can do the exact same thing, which makes the water cloudy after a while. Yeah. So all of those great benefits, like, I mean, it is really, really a wonderful experience personally. But I've noticed, like, looking at these trends and statistics and stuff like that, my music is only being noticed because I go to an open mic and tell a handful of people about it. And maybe one out of the ten people will actually go on the Spotify and click and have a listen and so on and so forth. And then two days after the, the live performance that I've done, there's no activity, no listeners, nothing. So it's like, well, then what the heck do you do? How how do you become more noticed in this big sea? Um, like I, I remember you and I, we we I mean we've produced a number of songs, and the only way one of them ended up on a playlist was because one person liked it enough and put it on the playlist. But even then it's not producing enough money oh, yeah. for, for PayPal to send it to us because <laughs> it's under their minimum limit. <laughs> and it's like, well, then how does this, how does this even work? Yeah. And that's, um, that's so going, not to stop, not to cut you off, yeah. but I was going to say no, for no. the cons though, that is like saturation, which is always yeah. what we, the biggest thing. Um, one of the big ones that, and, I'm a huge Trent Reznor fan, and he talked about this recently on a Rick Rubin podcast. And I, that's why I added it to our cons list, because it was like, ah. this is a valid point. But like, yeah. people are more distracted while listening to music or doing multiple things instead of actually just sitting and listening. And he mentioned that, like, you'd go to a record yeah. store, you'd pick up a record, and you would just do like a listening session. You'd sit in a small, ch- in a room, you'd put on a thing and you just be vegging out and listening to music. I mean, I remember when we started 16, 17, I was dating. We would you'd listen to music when, you know, you're making out or whatever, but like you'd sit there and you just chill and you wouldn't, you know, you'd be listening to the lyrics. That is yeah. not common anymore. It's not the culture. It's, uh, it's the, not. the technology. Uh, right. The technology changed the way our culture consumes music. Uh, when in the seventies, the the technology was a cumbersome. It was this, It was a giant vinyl <laughs> disc. 
you had to put it on this record player and you had to sit near it or at least in the same room um, and it was it was a it was a cultural experience i think rick beato uh, talked yeah. a bit about uh, the whole idea of when when he was younger the way you consumed music was a cultural experience uh, where you physically had to stop and be a part of the the album and because music wasn't you know released constantly and artists they put out an album and then they toured with it and there was a limited amount of stuff that you could actually get or at least listen to at any given time like okay you could have 10 records but try switching 10 records in less than you know <laughs> less than five minutes right like, like it's you you the the art form of making albums back in the day was a, a whole experience it was art in the the the, the cover art the the liner notes the pictures that came with it the the physical act of putting the record onto a player and listening to a player um i personally don't listen to records because they're just too damn big but i entirely appreciate the 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 idea behind how music was consumed back then because i do the same thing with cds now someone comes out with an album that is one of my favorites i will buy their cd and i'll throw it in there i'll put it onto my ipod or whatever my listening device is and i will listen to the whole damn album all the way through mm -hmm. because that's what you did well to yes. your point like now well, people have it on during work or they're doing dishes or it's it's just in the background and three three minutes of music um like three minutes of music can easily be missed when you're distracted and doing something yeah. else so you say okay everybody's kind of listening the first song they heard it second song they heard it and then somebody does something and your song is squeezed in there well, nobody actually heard it or paid attention to it because, like you said, people are easily distracted. They're doing multiple things because of the way the technology uh, presents the music to people now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And when he, had, when Reznor said that, it was like, man, that that is very true. Like we all just kind of put it on as background noise. Yeah. And that is, you're right, it's a cultural shift of things. Um, which leads to the last two cons. And the so the, the one of them is already, everybody knows, is payouts aren't good. Um, oh, but yeah. the last <laughs> one, which is touching on what you just talked about, was small, hair, small artists have very little say in how the industry changes. Yeah, And I think that's a whole other podcast episode that we could touch on. Sure. But that is very true. And that leads into the last topic, which is perfect. Like, do you adapt or do you die? Yeah. What? Well, yeah, that's. And so you and I, I sent you something and it, to anybody listening, there's a really good Vice video that just came out with um, this rap artist. And he basically manipulated the Spotify system by creating um he learned programming and coding and he built like these spotify bots that basically like super streamed his songs and he made hundreds of thousands of dollars off this and granted i don't know if it's legal stuff i don't i don't remember how long ago he did it yeah um but he basically got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of streams which he used to create more and more and more and he streamlined it what is my point to this it is adapting to what the industry is. He's a small artist. Whether or not yeah. any of us agree with what he did or didn't do, it that's, again, moral or ethical. That's not for any of us, just the way the industry is. Um, but he adapted. And yeah. One of those things to think about where it's like, do you adapt? Do you die? And yeah. is adapting have to be that? like uh i don't know the right word to use but like just kind of corrupt a little bit yeah i i would add that individuals would need to ask start asking themselves the question of what it is they're trying to get out of the music yeah. business 
because uh, creating music and sharing it with people can be done without making money. Uh, you, you can't do a lot of it or make a living if you don't make money doing that. Um, but I think what this uh, rap artist was doing is he's just using the music system, he's exploiting the music system uh, rather cleverly uh, to make money. And making money, I think, is inherently attached to marketing. And this whole mishmash of what does it mean to be an artist or a musician these days and how do you make money or make a living off of your creations? There is marketing and business and money all involved and it all just sort of crosses each other's boundaries and you have to decide as an individual what mixture of that sauce do you want, you know? Like, he he may, like, he may, this uh, this rap artist might have made, you know, $200,000 in one day off of, you know, exploiting this system. But is his music any good? Is, yeah. does he enjoy making music and is it about making music? Or is he going to use AI to make music? mediocre music and fool the system to make money and it becomes this convoluted kind of unethical or morally reprehensible sort of equation what are you doing with music i really want i'm so glad you brought that up and i didn't mean to cut you off but no because I've, I've talked to a couple of friends of mine that are other musicians too about this whole situation and it's been mixed and yeah. I totally agree with you on the fact that it's like, this isn't um, showing you're a good songwriter or showing that you're actually a good at music. Like you manipulated a system and granted it's a, it's a consumerism system type thing, but like it doesn't prove that you're actually good or that you actually have a good song or that you have good music or, and that's well, again, that's actual... opinion, but. Yeah, it, it it doesn't prove that you have actual talent. Yes. You know, you want to talk about okay, there's you know, there's there are musicians that still play, you know, medieval instruments. Well, that's just as valuable as playing other instruments and that takes talent, especially when there's like 24 strings on some of these instruments. Well, okay, you could okay, look at me. I'm a fantastic uh, AI user. Well, that just means you're a good computer programmer. Is that good? Is that bad? Mm -hmm. You know, it's the choice. You know, it's up to you. Yeah. You know, and ultimately, like, I, I the, what I would conclude with in regards to, like, the Spotify thing is Spotify essentially has become the new kind of radio. And there's massive, massive amounts of content on that radio station. And it's oftentimes an insurmountable mountain of just content to wade through that in many cases, at least for, for me, I become overwhelmed by it and I just give up. And I'm like, I don't know. I, who, th there's, there's so much of it. How do I know what is good, what's not good? Well, is it the music? Do you, you like it, right? That means it's good because if it, if you enjoy it, well, then it's good to you. All right. Well, all of the you, there's just so much that it's it's not like in the old days where where the select few that were expected to be top quality were then served up to us on a platter. Yeah. Um, it's it's just not like that anymore. So Spotify. Well, how, how you know as wonderful as it is uh, to to the individual to get their their material and their content out, um, it is it's like good luck, man. Good luck. Uh, you got enough money? You got some T Swift money? All right, now we're talking. But good grief for somebody like you and I. It's like I mean, it's not even trying to like 
it's not even trying to fit into a corner of the Spotify world. Yeah. There's there's just no corner. <laughs> yeah, there there really isn't. Um, no. And that's a that's again that's a whole nother episode that we could get into because yeah, it's, right. you're right. Um, but we are going to wrap it up on that. All right. Because I think that was a perfect way of ending it. Um, and I think that's it. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? I, yeah, I guess the only other things like that. I, I one of the things that I think would uh, in the article that I had read, um, there was talk about. Obviously, there will become moral questions, and there'll be legislation and litigation involved uh, when AI starts becoming a real thing. And my guess is, at some point, the the, the standard will will have to come in. And let's say somebody creates some AI generated music, and they sing over it, and then they distribute it. Right. My prediction is that they'll need to start putting a disclaimer on the music that this is either AI generated or not. And I think that'll be the next stage in regards to using AI. I think AI is going to be used. People are going to start producing music, using it, and so on and so forth. But what's the ethical side of it? Yeah. Well, kind of like the, uh, what was it, the explicit lyrics sort of label i think they're going to have to start putting notification to the consumer that this is either people produced or you know machine produced um and in regards to like okay producers and record companies start using ai to uh essentially support an artist's catalog and writing music for them and so on and so forth. Okay, so this makes making music easier and faster, but who is it really benefiting? Mm -hmm. Is it benefiting the artist or is it benefiting the producers and the record companies? Because we've already found out that the record companies are essentially running Spotify and they're essentially contracted with Spotify and they're all the same thing. So um, to the listeners out there, I keep your eyes peeled in regards to what AI is going to be doing. Um, it seems to have already, apparently it's, it's already used. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I guess um, a lot of individuals journalist types out there that are uh, experimenting with AI music and you know how do you feel about AI produced music what do you think as as as, as a listener of music uh, what should be done what what can't be done what's right what's wrong um, I, I guess we we can we can say as a usual thing you know tell us what you think put in the comments uh, what, what are some of the things you've heard about AI? Uh, it's, it's a whole new world out there, man. Yeah, it really is, and it's changing. Um, that's awesome. Um, well, we're going to wrap it up, and we are going to say thank you for listening to this episode, and we hope you come back for the